Thank you for joining us on uh, Bloomberg TV, uh, Mr. Sorensen. And if I can start by asking you, um, Data Monitor estimated that the uh, market for diabetes medicines in China will reach two billion by 2019. Is that a figure that you agree with, or would you have a different prediction? No, I think uh, Data Monitor is, uh, is a very credible company, so I'm, I'm sure uh, that is uh, it's, a, it's an appropriate estimate. We see a very strong uh, growth of the diabetes market uh, in China. Uh, we have historically seen growth rates uh, for our products uh, of around 20%, 30% in China. Uh, of course, uh, given the size of the business is growing, uh, the growth rates are coming down, but yes, we expect uh, significant growth in the future. Can you quantify that, how much growth by next year, for example? We uh, see the current demand uh, for insulins growing at somewhere between 15 and 20% uh, per year. Uh, we also see uh, an increasing capacity to treat uh, diabetics in China. We see the introduction of new and improved uh, products. So I would be expecting to see growth rates in China somewhere between 15 and 20% uh, going forward for a number of years. Great. Um, and your sales targets in China by next year, um, sort of in September last year, um, you estimated 10 billion kroner up from 4 billion. Has that changed at all? We're a year on now. Well, we're a little cautious right now giving any guidance for next year. We'll, the guidance that will come for next year from us will be in connection with the third quarter results release. Uh, but suffice to say that we're looking at uh, growth rates of somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. Uh, also for next year. And um, Sanofi said they were going to start training uh, 10,500 doctors in diabetes care um, in China. I know you have um, some plans as well. Um, can you tell me about those? I think it's an excellent initiative uh, by Sanofi Aventis to, to expand healthcare capacity, as you mentioned, with 10,500 uh, physicians being educated. We've already today educated 55,000 uh, physicians. There is a huge need uh, to get the healthcare capacity up in China such that we can have more people diagnosed and treated appropriately. So I think it's a fantastic initiative. The more help uh, in that uh, direction is fine. And what plans specifically does Nova Nordisk have going forward? Our plans are to expand uh, our sales force uh, and the sales force uh, then work together with the Ministry of Health uh, and local or rural uh, and the regional hospitals uh, to run education programs such that more and more healthcare staff are educated in diabetes. We also help putting uh, education programs together for patients so they can learn, they and their families can learn how to live with diabetes. And uh, our uh, initiatives are based on the expanded sales force. Great. Um, and um, your share of the insulin market at the moment, I believe, is around 50% in China. How much do you expect to grow that by? Uh, I have to correct you. Our, our market share of the, the Chinese insulin market is slightly more than 60%. Um, of course, with more activities from our key competitors, Sanofi Aventis and Eli Lili, uh, and also uh, with a strong cadre of local manufacturers, one has to anticipate that the market shares for Novo Nordisk will be under pressure, uh, but that's in a very uh, growing market. Uh, so we will see strong growth of our business, but perhaps uh, the market shares uh, in the future will be coming down to more normal levels. I hope, though, that we will be able to continue to having a market share of north of 50%. And um, moving on to sort of um, U.S. health reform and um, Europe austerity, how do you expect that to, to impact your growth going forward? We've seen a significant impact from U.S. healthcare reform and from increasing healthcare reforms in Europe uh, in, the, in the second half of last year and in particular this year. Uh, that full effect uh, from the U.S. healthcare reform will be in the numbers, so to speak, uh, as we approach the end of eleven. And that means that in 12 and going for onwards, the comparison, the growth, will be based on numbers that have already included healthcare reform. Uh, so the total base of the business have come down. The growth rates will then be the same as in the past. Okay. And um, this plan for the research and development center um, in China, um, how are, th are those plans still on track? Um, we have we started uh, our investment in research in China uh, with technology projects, uh, having our Chinese colleagues develop uh, new manufacturing processes, 
and for our already marketed products. They are now started on, on a new target uh, discovery and in the future they will be working on diabetes as well. So we'll see a significant expansion uh, of our re research staff in China. The plans are going ahead as, uh, as planned uh, with a very, very significant expansion. And um, speaking of expansion, um, where do you think the majority of your growth is going to come from in the next 10 years? The majority of our growth in absolute terms is going to come from the United States, uh, followed uh, very closely uh, by emerging markets and, and including uh, China. We see unfortunately that uh, the European markets and the Japanese markets are, are very mature. Uh, austerity measures uh, will impact pricing levels, willingness to pay for innovation and reimbursement of innovative medicines uh, is, is declining in Europe. So our anticipation is the European business will grow at around 5%. Our Japanese business more or less the same, unfortunately. So main part of the growth, China, United States and emerging markets. And um, this strategy as well that you have, differentiating between Europe, the US and um, emerging markets, um, is this a strategy that's going to be played out across the pharmaceutical industry or is it one unique to Nova Nordisk? I cannot speak for, for my competitors. It's unique for Nova Nordisk in the sense that we offer both generic products as well as high-end innovative products. And uh, since we originally were a generic manufacturer, and today still is the largest generic manufacturer of human insulin. Uh, we will pledge also in consideration of the patient's access uh, to our products that these products, affordable insulins, will be available in low income and emerging markets for all the years into the future. In developed markets like US, Europe and Japan, we have to pay for the innovation. And so that is why we occasionally would withdraw the low end products from American, European, and Japanese markets for us to pay the innovation such that the developing countries will have better medication in the future. And what are the prospects for potential mergers in future of Nova Nordisk, either takeover, we'll start with takeovers by Nova Nordisk. The prospects for mergers is zero. We cannot be taken over and we have no interest and wish to take over other companies. We'll fortify our pipeline and our base of technologies by a smaller bolt-on acquisitions, but no major mergers, uh, and no one else cannot be taken over.